we settle? Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to the September Merrimack Parks and Recreation Committee meeting and I am Laura Janes and I'm presently the chairman and we will start at my far right we have a new member and if you'd introduce yourself Phil. My name is Phil Perzuski. I live in Sarah Drive in Merrimack, been a resident for 45 years, something like that. So uh, just thought I'd try out this committee and see if I could help. Great. Well, we're glad, to, glad to have you aboard because I think you're on other things in town. I am. Don't try Thank it you. out. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. And next, Maureen Hall's uh, senior representative. Thank you, Maureen. Shannon Barnes, school board alternate and tonight's representative. Uh, David Shaw, just a full term representative. Thank you, Dave. I'm Rick Greenier. I'm the MYA representative. Thank you, Rick. Christine Lavoie, Vice Chair. Thank you. And to my left. Jamie Devlin, member. Michelle Creswell, member and secretary. Julie Poole, committee member. Tracy McGraw, member. Lon Woods, town council rep. And Matt Kasparis, director of parks and recreation. said I'm sorry I didn't hear Tracy I guess I missed that huh <laughs> sorry <laughs> so many people I was trying to be quiet tonight they said I was ruining my voice today to hear you <laughs> that's good <laughs> okay thank you everyone for attending and joining us on TV if you're there so starting with old business I have Christine uh, Lavoy with the update from the dog park committee subcommittee certainly thank you Laura Hi folks, so the dog park's going well. Um, a lot of people still going, uh, even though we have the COVID thing, everybody's practicing distancing, which is good. Uh, the dog park committee group with the Parks and Rec Department is looking for volunteers to help bring up a committee to do some fundraising. Um, as we know, you know, people fall out of the committee for various reasons, whether they move out of the area, their puppers, kind of grows too old for the dog park and doesn't like it as much. So it's a matter of we need to bring in some more people for help, for fundraising, cleaning up, poop angels. So we need a lot of things like that for help, making sure we have enough poop bags out there. Um, we do have some weed and grass issues that we're working through with Matt and his maintenance gentleman. And so if you're interested in volunteers, you can reach out to us via a couple different ways. Ideally is uh, Friends of the Merrimack Dog Park Facebook page, and you can also reach out directly to Matt at the Parks and Rec Department. Um, we are in desperate need for poop bags. So you can order some online. There's Amazon. There's, oh, there was a couple other spots you have to sh let me know again, Tracy. And there's also at the dollar store, they also have packages that we can do that. And currently our park, dog park balance is $763.59. Normally it takes us about $1,000 to go ahead and do the children's playground mulch in the spring. So we need to raise a little bit of money or we'll have to ask Matt and I don't think he has it in the budget right now to um, bring that up. So help is needed for fundraising and I think I covered it all Tracy any ideas on poop bag purchases I, I love the question the poop bag question yeah um, Amazon actually has if you look at different places if you know from working with Amazon there's a lot of different mm -hmm. options that are out there but you've got to look very closely to find the actual ones that's a good deal um, but you'll find some that are in boxes that are about this big um, and they're loaded with them and it is the best deal it's a brown box mm -hmm. um, and they're pretty decent bags as opposed to you know putting your hand through because that's not nice mm -mm. <laughs> um, the, they're good price for them locally I haven't found them that good dollar store is good for a quick trip for extra poop bags but on the bulk side there's not a lot of them you mm -hmm. can also go to Pets Choice. Pets Choice obviously has a good supply, and they're also obviously a sponsor of the dog park. Yes, so. they are. Thank you, Tracy. Okay, at this point, oh, I want to ask a question. Sorry, yes, Maureen. Maureen. Sorry. Well, people bring their dogs to the dog park. Why can't they bring a poop bag? 
I think generally, and most people do bring poop bags, well, but how sometimes can you run out of poop bags. They, you know, sometimes they only put one one well, in their pocket. They should bring Maureen. two poop bags. I can't. Believe, <laughs> I, I mean, I have a little tiny dog, and I bring three poop bags if I go around the block. Okay, I mean, come. Shut her mic off. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, so any dog, I don't I think I don't think that's the committee thing. committee question. I think that's a great question. You can throw it to all your friends and neighbors with dogs. How's oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Shannon. Are there any organized fundraisers that you're working on right now? Mm, not at this moment. Okay. Okay, on to new business. And uh, bef I'm going to, oh, Michelle, my gosh. Thank you. Can we put the minutes? Thank you. You're welcome. Did you just oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> All right. If you've had a chance to read the minutes of August 18th, 2021, all this chatter, boy. Uh, <laughs> I will take a motion to accept the minutes of August 18th. So moved. Thank you, Jamie. Do I have a second? I'll hey, second. Great. Okay. Uh, I don't think you weren't here last meeting, Phil, so I think, but you have the minutes. I know. I, I'm still learning. <laughs> Go ahead. We'll take yeah. Christine. You're going to second it? I'll second it. All right. All those in favor of the minutes? It's that, we're here. that we're here. Yeah. Abstaining? Yeah. I'm abstaining. Yep. Abstaining. Okay. Phil, Phil will abstain. 903. Are there 12 of us here? Wow. So now, uh, now I think I'm ready. Um, we're on to new business, which is something that um, <clears throat> I'm going to start with. It is not on the agenda because it's so new. I don't know if I can find the words, but uh, I've had some big changes over this last six month in my life. Uh, I am retired, and my family is moving towards new paths. My son and daughter-in-law and the six year, five year old have moved into the house with us and we have an apartment downstairs and they will live there full year all year round. My little granddaughter is started kindergarten at Thornton's Ferry and it's going very well so that's a big few you know and she loves she loves it. She has Miss Burns who my son had <coughs> 32 years ago so <laughs> that's pretty funny but our, my husband and I, our goal was to go to, uh, to New Mexico in October because my, my daughter is out there with her husband and family, his family, and uh, we are going to spend six months out there. We are West Birds, I guess you call <laughs> us. Uh, my husband is at the age where we, we would like to do some traveling. We're going to take our time and go to Albuquerque, and we've been there several times. She got married out there in 2019. And about 12 of her band friends from Merrimack High came out and celebrated with us. It was pretty funny, but we've been out several times, and uh, we just it's time to do a little bit of traveling together. We haven't done that. We've been in our house 45 years, so this whole transition has really been a little overwhelming because I thought we've lived there 45 years, and we started in right across from Thornton's Ferry School in a cottage, on Lake Natacook, we have beach right, so it's a great little spot, but we jack the house up, we put a basement in, we've done so much work. We were running out of water when I was teaching, so we finally got town water and sewerage and gas, and so we've done many, many improvements, and we don't want to give up the house, but we are going to share it with our, my son and his family six months out of the year. And so that being said, uh, I love this committee. I've been on it forever ever since we purchased Wasserman. I was on the committee with um, Dan Eyre, who is the town manager at the time, who helped us facilitate that purchase with LC, you know, LCI Land Conservation Investment Program. And so it's, it's been great. And I have a big interest in the lake and all that happens. And I really didn't want to see condos at that property. And so that's really worked out. And I I love working with all of you, and the committee right now has a whole new vibe, so I feel good about that. Maybe some of you can help Matt out some more, too. <laughs> He's got a lot going on, but you're doing a wonderful job, Matt, and I'm going to miss a lot of this, including haunted rides and mm -hmm. all that. And uh, So that being said, I, I would 
I will plan to resign at next meeting. Well, I'm hoping to resign as chairman, but it, my term is up in 2022 anyway. But I'd like to stay on as an alternate until that point. But because it's not directly on the agenda, I wanted to bring this up and let you know. And if there's some people who would like to consider being chair at this point, it would just be till May, June of 2022. I'm not sure Christine's interested in it, but she can stay where she is. So those are consi some considerations for next month's meeting. So anybody have any questions or comments? Or? <sighs> okay, that's I good. do. Thank you, you do? for <laughs> all that you have done you, for Christine. this committee I, I, and over the years. I, I, I thought it, I didn't know it was going to happen. I wasn't sure with that's COVID okay. and all this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all the changes in our country and all the things that happen. And I, I'm a, a New England girl, but uh, New Mexico's awesome. They got great food. <laughs> <laughs> and my son-in-law's grandmother called me and said, you just come out. You just come out. I have all your clothes. You don't need to bring anything. <laughs> we'll cook for you. So that's all. And I will miss all of you, too. But... I know who to call. We are the phones miss you. work. Absolutely. And, and you're going to have a wonderful thank new you. chapter. Thank you. Thank you. And you're going to come back and visit. Once I get on the road, that'll be good. She's going to come back and visit. Right? Yeah. I don't know. We're totally more confused. <laughs> <laughs> so All of it. And, and, and just, you know, getting involved with the committee so many years ago and, and, and the school district as a t young teacher. Uh, right. Uh, so many changes in Merrimack, but all good. And I think there's a whole new bunch of people out there, new families. There's certainly a lot of new families, and uh, there's six kindergarten classes at Thornton's. Right. And so it's, it's changing fast, so it'll be interesting to see. But we're glad to hang on to the house, too. It'll be a, a family property, so that'll be nice. So, so thank you, everybody, and for all your support and the good humor, and especially my my secretary and all that stuff. So. <laughs> yes, Maureen, in humor. Who's going to make our brownies? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody, my husband said to me, maybe you shouldn't make carrot cake. I found out more people don't really like it, or they just eat the frosting. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I got you. Are making the brownies? Did I just see that head shake? No, I'm eating carrot Yeah, she likes the carrot It was too hot today. No way. <laughs> yeah. You can't believe the stuff I'm doing. <laughs> the contractor just left today, so it's coming along. Mm -hmm. And then it mm -hmm. rains and we get water in the basement. So, okay. Absolutely. That's all right. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. And on to new business. Uh, Matt, would you like to introduce all right. that whole gig? Sure. Thank you. Um, so we talked initially in June and then we talked again in August. And, you know, one of the things we used to do kind of pre-COVID was to do annual park reviews, you know, and, and kind of divvying up the parks and just a fresh set of eyes on it. You know, the, you know, obviously I'm at Wasserman Park every day, all day, um, but I might get to the depot boat ramp once a year, you know, um, or, you know, um, you know, something along those lines, you know, Weston Park or, you know, some of those, you know, smaller properties. I just, I don't have the time. So, um, so it's, a, you know, the idea is obviously just fresh set of eyes to look at if there's any particular maintenance needs, if there's any ideas for future scout projects, Boy Scout, Girl Scout projects. Um, is there anything broken that we need to deal with? You know, um, and then lastly, and kind of more important for tonight is if there's anything that's um, future bigger ticket projects that we might want to consider doing since we're going to be talking about capital improvements. Um, a few of you have sent me stuff, and I can certainly project those, you know, what I have here um, if it's needed. Um, but if it's more just maintenance things, uh, you know, we don't necessarily need to go through that because um, we'll, we could be here all night doing that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, we'll just go down the list, and if you have, you know, give us your general impressions, and, and then if you can send me, you know, by email later, um, if you have something written um, or pictures or, you know, those kinds of things, um, then we'll go from there. Um, and like I said, if we have things that are capital improvement items and we can figure out where to put them in our, in our list um, when we get to that point. So we'll start with Abby Griffin Park. Maureen. Well, I was just down there for the 9-11 and I looked around and uh, standing by the fence, the fence definitely needs to be spray washed. It's green, that whole vinyl the whole length of it is green as green 
hiding. And then I looked up, and there's a couple of nice dead branches up above our heads mm -hmm. that need to be taken down before they fall down on some of the people that are sitting there. And I just heard that they're going to put a statue down there. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that later. Oh, okay. The well, the I didn't. It wasn't there yet. So, but other than that, there's always can have grass seed somewhere on that park. But right. other than that, I didn't see anything bad that was, you know, maybe more people donate more benches to sit on because a lot of people I was standing but I could have brought my own chair I didn't mm -hmm. think of it but there's a lot of people mm -hmm. you know I feel though it just still isn't good for handicapped people very it's scary to go down that hill with a wheelchair yeah so that's the only thing I found bad and a lot of elderly people love the concerts they so they sit up, up on, on that level the yep. and they can't see because there's too many trees up there to look through <laughs> So. Yeah, I'm not sure if there's an Anything. easy way to, to make that accessible, unfortunately. Yes. Um, one of the things we learned, and like I said, I'll talk about that memorial that's coming um, a little bit later, but one of the things we learned is all the um, like utilities through the park run, you know, where you have the, the road comes down from the courthouse, they're all on the right-hand side. So yep. if you were going to put any kind of parking down there, that's where it would go, but we can't because yeah. the utility is It's better. hard, though. It's hard. Um, so I'm not sure that that's something we can solve necessarily. Yeah. Well, maybe some of the trees that have grown up, mm -hmm. you know, with, they sit up right by the courthouse. Right. And you can sit there, but you can't see through the trees. Maybe they just need to be topped off a little bit, and then at least if you sit, you can look down to right. the bandstand. I mean, they can hear. Yeah. It's just that you like a visual, too, sometimes. Right. That's the end of my program. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Shannon? It's not specifically to Abby Griffin, but I know Watson Park, back when we had those fall festivals, ended up getting all the utilities put in place mm -hmm. for, um, for because they wanted concerts there for that one event. Um, but would that be a consideration to have that flat land with the pavilions for uh, the concerts in the park? It, it could. The challenge there is parking. Yeah. I mean, it, mm -hmm. that lot only holds 40 cars at best. Um, the town's very adamant they're not going to open it up to let people drive on the lawn and park on the lawn for concerts and things so um, and again this bandstand was built specifically for concerts okay. too so I was thinking the flat land might get more of your, your yeah I mean you would certainly accessible. get more more strollers you know, too but <laughs> yeah. strollers too but again you, you know you'd have to make it like you know the parking lot handicap parking only and then everybody else has to go elsewhere or something and I, I'm not sure if you're going to do concerts oh, yeah. there that that might be a challenge um, but okay um, and we'll get to Watson in a minute anyway but uh, Bishop Tracy so Bishop is the one that is down at the bottom of the hill below the middle school mm -hmm. and um, I remember that field when my daughter was just starting to play field hockey when she started <laughs> middle school, and wow, what a difference, because it was a mud hole back then. Oh, yeah. um, the field is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I walked the field to make sure that there were no divots or anything. It's in great shape. The fence is in great shape. Looks like it was just painted. Um, the buildings look like they're good from the outside. They're locked, so I couldn't tell if there's any issue on the inside. But structurally, they all actually look, you know, at 90 degree angles. So that's a good thing. <laughs> um, there's a couple of benches out there. Yeah. They're fine. The road is fine. Um, there's a couple of potholes at the very entrance to the road, but you can get around them very easily. Um, everything else is, is in really good shape. Um, the only concern that I did have was there's a, what I call a breakaway gate. Um, probably for a gator or for um, a, a golf cart. Um, they're usually the kind of gates that you can literally, if you have to, bust down. The whole point of it is to have access for emergency services. I don't know if that's what it's for. It might just be something that they unlock when they need to. Um, so I would, I would just ask about that question. If it's meant to be breakaway, it's going to take a big truck. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that it is meant to be breakaway, but I haven't looked at that particular gate. Do you know, Rick? I don't know for certain, but I'm pretty sure it's for maintenance and lawn mowing, and that DPW probably has a key to that gate. It's, it's locked up very tight and everything else, and I thought it might be that, but I figured I'd bring the point out, because usually mm -hmm. when you have a breakaway gate, it doesn't take more than a car 
really to kind of push it down. So yeah. I just figured I'd ask. Yep. My, my guess is that it's, as Rick said, for yeah. maintenance, not. I didn't see any other openings. So that makes the most sense to get a, a tractor in there. And that's yeah. some nice grass. Because yeah. <laughs> we do it, unfortunately, we do have issues, especially in the last year with people driving on fields and, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. that, you know, oh, I can park here, you know. Um, we've seen a lot of that lately. Um, so we've, all over town, we've been putting up boulders in, yeah. in you know, pretty much every field because we've had those issues. So, so okay. Uh, Depot, Steve, boat, boat rent, Christine. Okay. This is a nice little spot. I mean, little. <laughs> but it was a great location. Um, reported a broken fence. Parking lots in a fairly good condition. The dirt ramp, I'll call it a ramp, path to the actual underpass for the railroad bed can use some fill. Mm -hmm. So that could be like a good uh, Boy Scout, Girl Scout mm -hmm. project. The ties that are re holding back the material coming down the hill could also use some readjusting as they seem to be shifting. Um, there's definitely a lot of graffiti. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is a popular spot for the kids <laughs> to go. And don't worry, she did say yes, so this is good. That was a graffiti <laughs> picture, so you'd have to see the picture, it was really funny. Um, going down, it's like a chute, it's um, paved and cement and rock wall on the sides, all looks in decent condition, minor maintenance things. However, the steps um, from the ramp to the water, as we know, the river comes up and down so they're like a, a granite concrete steps and there's like six steps that go down they're in fairly sturdy order however with the um, erosion from the river so now we can see that the plastic material that um, was put down for erosion control is now exposed so i don't know if um, some installment of rip rock would help prevent further damage so that's a, something we could consider. Um, and then some minor maintenance of pruning trees and things like that. That's what I found there. Okay. Um, and I know that, you know, I had forwarded DPW your email when it came in and she's <laughs> yeah. like, again, we were just there last week. And I think it was, she was there in between the time when you went and when you sent right. the email. Mm -hmm. And so the graffiti has been cleaned up again, but yeah, it's one of our trouble spots. Um, and I'm pretty sure um, and I don't have the budget in front of me, but I'm pretty sure DPW actually has a maintenance, has a capital project already in the pipeline this year, next year, somewhere to fix the actual access into the river mm -hmm. because of the water level dropping and the erosion and, and all that to make that an easier. Yeah. I mean, this is a carry-in boat ramp anyway. This is not a, mm, not a trailer boat. Right. Um, it, I think it's going to be a constant maintenance issue. That's because it's on a river. You, know, yeah. you get that the constant flow of water. Exactly. It's not like the, the steps are moving or anything like that. It's just, yeah. Uh, they do make um, kind of floating docks that will adjust with the liver, river oh, to make it yeah. easier. And I'm not sure if that's what they're looking at, but I know there is a project somewhere in the pipeline. It's just it's in DPW's budget, so I don't know the, the specifics. Thank you. So, okay. Uh, Gibson. Lawns. Thank you, Matt. Um, I was over and checked out Gibson and Martell Fields. I have uh, s several items. Um, the most important one that I saw was the uh, dugout on the, yep. I'll call it the third base side of, of uh, Gibson Field 2. Um, the sheeting just underneath the uh, shingled roof, and it's very small in terms of area. Mm -hmm. but it's all really beat up and needs replacing so that we don't get into worrying about rafters yep. getting yep. Uh, damaged. Um, the other thing that I noticed, I'll, I'll just put these in order that I prioritized. Um, the, um, the, the concession stand at Martell Field, mm -hmm. um, on the back end, I don't know whether we placed a little, uh, it looks like more a bin for storing maybe trash barrels and perhaps some light equipment, but um, 
it had uh, two doors, mm -hmm. and um, one of the doors had been ripped off. It wasn't apparent to me that it was on site still, Yeah. but it allows weather and obviously animals and whatever, so. Mm -hmm. um, there was, in, in the same dugout I mentioned, there was one um, um, graffiti mm -hmm. damage at the, um, I'll call them gearboxes for the players as they are in yep. the dugout on either end. Um, they're now just unpainted, probably pine boarding. Yep. And I was wondering if perhaps um, it's worth suggesting that we paint them with a polyurethane or something which would discourage the kind of scraping into the wood that this graffiti was done. Yep. Um, the, um, the other thing I noticed was there's a block building at the um, parking side edge of Martell 1, um, I'm sorry, Gibson 1. I suspect it has something to do with the irrigation of the fields. Yep. And it's in great shape, but there are three vents, one on one side and two on the other, and the um, shielding grates, whatever, that initially were flush with the outer cement blocks yep. is missing. And while it doesn't appear to be uh, causing any damage, it's certainly an, an entry for small rodents and yep. whatever damage they can cause in the building. You might look into replacing those. <clears throat> um, I noticed on Gibson one, the bleachers on the um, far side nearest the DPW mm -hmm. uh, property. Um, they're in fine shape, but the water, ta the standing water and the bleachers aren't getting along really well. <clears throat> the one corner seems to be um, at risk of getting a level and that might cause problems for the um, people sitting on the bleachers. Okay. It didn't look like a big, big, big fix, but something I noticed. Um, Look at my notes here. <laughs> Overall, everything is in very good shape. The, and maybe Rick can help me out. The infields on one and two, I guess they didn't get much use this year. And the crabgrass and the natural have begun to take root on the infields. Um, it, it just means that in future, preparing them will be a little uh, yep. bigger job. Um, overall, the parking areas seem to be good. Martell itself is in great shape. It's been used more, obviously, just, just, just from my mm -hmm. looking around. I didn't get a chance to see if the scoreboard is working you know, functioning properly. It wasn't lit up and I wasn't gonna bother somebody to come down and throw a switch. Yep. Um, and that's it, there was one small, one very small section of chain link fence, much of the size I think you're talking about, that didn't seem to be attached anywhere. It's on the property, I couldn't make right. out where it might be, so I don't have any suggestions as where, but it's okay. just sitting there loose. Otherwise, okay. I Good. was very impressed with how Good. well things are being taken care of. Good, and in that concession stand, the, the little shed on the back actually belongs to men's softball. That's where they store like the field maintenance equipment, and that building got broken into, the, the canteen itself got broken into last winter. You know, they, I mean, then that's a solid door, and I saw so I, they had to work at it to get in there, but Unfortunately, we do get some vandalism over there, and that was one of those issues. I think softball is trying to replace their shed, um, but 
hasn't done so yet, but it's their, their shed, not the town. Yeah, the concession stand itself seemed to be in yeah. good order and, and um, well maintained and taken care of. It just says little bin on the yeah. back side. Yep. Good. Thank you, ma'am. All right. O'Gara, Rick. Thank you. Um, I found the O'Gara Recreation Area to be in good condition overall. Um, I walked the ramps in the skate park, and most are in pretty good condition. Um, I'm sure there are close, a couple of them are getting close to needing replacement, yeah. and you're aware of that. Yep. Um, and the basketball court gets some use, um, but it's really needed to be updated. Uh, it's pretty old. And I know there's been a lot of controversy over that parcel of land, but that's one improvement that it could uh, definitely stand. Okay. Other than that, things were good. Okay, good. Quick and easy. All right. Um, Reed's Ferry, Rick. <laughs> so at what we call, um, it was in good condition overall. Really the only thing I noticed that needs repair or replacement is on what we call field number six, which is to the immediate right as yep. you enter. And um, it basically needs a new backstop. Some of it is missing. Um, and MYA has been transitioning that from a soccer area to a softball area in the spring. Okay. So the backstop will be important. Yeah, okay. That's, and that's a good, that's a, that's The rest important. is little stuff and maintenance. Yeah, okay. All right, good. Uh, Jamie Trudowski. A uh, couple of really great fields over there. Uh, I had never been there before, so it was uh, interesting finding my way over that. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I did notice, and those are my notes, it makes it easier. Uh, uh, the signage was really, really hard to see from the street. So if you don't know where it is, you're bombing by it. Uh, so just if it's used for anything that might be pulling people from out of town, it's really, really hard to see. Uh, the rain looks like it really beat the stuffing out of both the parking, parts of the parking lot and parts of the field. Third base line looks like there's a little washouts there. Uh, there's some puddling there, as well as the around the entrance and just as it comes down. It looks like it already been regraded a little bit. Uh, I just, okay. you know, it's that kind of gravel. I suppose that's more of an annual thing than anything else. Yeah. Uh, and then the only other thing is uh, it looks as though there's been some work to reclaim portions of the field, you know, the, the woods and the vines, mm -hmm. uh, specifically around the, as you pull into the parking lot on the right, the soccer fields. Yeah. Directly as you pull in, you have the baseball field and the, the, um, the left field is great and there's room behind the fence. The right field is completely overtaken with vines and trees uh, and looks like poison ivy such that if a ball goes over that fence I don't know how many people will go after it so probably none <laughs> yeah so so that was my 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 uh, okay. only ob observation there is perhaps the behind that field could be reclaimed a bit okay otherwise I think it's a great set of fields yeah. Matt excuse me um, I know that Lori from DPW did a lot of work around the soccer fields just last week I believe yeah, it so great. um for all I know, maybe she will be continuing behind the outfield, but uh, they did a tremendous job making that soccer area more user-friendly for children. Yeah, I mean, they probably pushed back a good 10, 12 feet at yeah. least. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. Good. Yep. Good, yeah. It's, um, I mean, the rain's beating everything up this year. I mean, it's like yeah, every week just... we get these torrential downpours, and again, tonight, you know, so um, that, that's that been a, a, a challenge this year, certainly. So, but good. Any, anything else there, Jamie? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Twin Bridge, Christine. Oh, boy. So this is a, one of my favorite parks, but it encompasses quite a bit. There's, they've got the MYA building, another building. What is it called, the other one, lower, the gray one? Um, we'll call it the Bice Field. Bice Field? Fieldhouse. Field, Fieldhouse, okay. Yep. And then we have a, a soccer, um, baseball field. <laughs> and then it, it also encompasses a fairly good size set of trails so let's let's break it down so looking at the MYA building it was in really good shape the main parking lot has already been repaved and painted last year um, so it looks fantastic um, the parking lot behind the MYA building ponding trash you know it could definitely use some um, maybe uh, paving of some maybe some reclave pavement mm -hmm. until 
whatever bridge project is done. Um, the the baseball field it is a baseball field. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll say the right. I'll probably call it a soccer field. Who knows? So that field looks in great condition. There's some minor um, ponding on some of the dugouts. Um, nothing terrible unless you feel no. It no. it happens because yeah, of the that's grade. very common, unfortunately. Yep. So a lot of the um, path behind the dugouts to the playground itself. Definitely could use some new fill material because it's getting kind of that squishy dirt feeling to it mm -hmm. when it gets really wet back there. So taking a look at the actual playground, and I talked to some of the parents that were there at the time. Of course, I'm there taking pictures. No, no, I'm not taking pictures of your kid. I'm <laughs> taking pictures of the park. <laughs> so the, the fence itself uh, looks really good. There's a few boards on the right-hand side that are popped out. There's a few broken pieces on various parts of the playground. Nothing that looked like it was gonna be uh, impactful to a child getting hurt or anything like that. Um, there is one bridge piece, I'm not familiar with it. It looks like there's a board that's kind of warped that may need to be checked out. Okay. Um, one of the big things I saw at the playground was that um, it has not seen mulch in a long time. There's a lot of wear under the swing sets, and some of them are good, I don't know, 14, 15 inches deep. So you're starting to see the um, protective material they put down on the playground okay. to control the weeds. So that's being exposed in a lot of different places. So general maintenance, I'm not sure if we have a subcommittee anymore for that playground, no. So I'd say the material needs to be fixed, and one of the biggest things I would say is to be gone over by a maintenance person to make sure everything is in place, and then mulch would be the biggest there. Moving down the hill from the parking lot, we see the water erosion that we've seen at all the other parks, so that you definitely could use some TLC. The bottom lot that now we have those two parking spots that have been dedicated to handicap, mm -hmm. those get muddy, so they could also use from like that reclaiming pavement we talked about as well going further down onto the trails again we have some of the retaining walls that are re holding back material and fill they're going to need some some attention just to make it safer for that and then on the trails i would say there's one set of fence on the left as you approach the first bridge um, that is just falling apart and full of graffiti so that's going to need to be replaced there's a path going up, back up to the playground that's also seeing, seeing where and the boards are popping out, be trip hazards. Mm -hmm. So nothing capital as far as anything else you could figure out in the park, except maybe the mulch. The mulch will be being fixing the material and um, the playground mulch, as we already know with the dog park, that gets expensive. So yeah. Yeah, and that, that's going to take a lot more mulch than yeah, what we do at the dog it's, park. It's several thousand dollars. And I want to say we did it maybe two years ago, two and a half, maybe. Maybe we could get a crew in there trying to rake some around, re reposition maybe. some of it. There's not much. I mean, on, I under the swings always that. gets scooped up just by the nature right. of that anyway. But, um, but yeah, okay. That's All it. right. Um, Oh, yeah, so that's Kids Cove that she's talking yes. about. Yeah, it is Kids Cove, yes. yes. Is Rotary involved anymore at this point? Because we used to have some big cleanups Not, from the whole community. Mm -hmm. Well, they have told they told me a month or so ago that they they had they had some money that they had planned to spend invest there on a project, and mulch might be a really good option. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But they were having because of the last year and lack of fundraising they've had some cash flow so they haven't they're like think about ideas and when we have some money in hand again we'll we'll, yep. we'll reach back out and so um and i mentioned the plenty of graffiti all through the trails right oh yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> okay but you said yes <laughs> that's right <laughs> no <laughs> uh all laura right. vets yeah veterans park um is just beyond my house and um the one thing that's very nice is there's a nice sidewalk that goes all the way from Continental Boulevard mm -hmm. to Cambridge Drive that way, but then it comes down Old Camp Sergeant Road right in front of Vets all the way down to the playground. Mm -hmm. And many people in 
that end of town walk constantly all around there all the time from all over. So it's those are kept up very nicely, and that's a, a nice thing. I wish we had more sidewalks, but Veterans is certainly a popular place. Um, I usually go over during the week, and um, there's picnicking going on, quiet woods. People are using the football field to play catch or run the dog <laughs> or whatever, but harmless. The boat ramp, uh, the town did several years back, and it's holding up very well. And that, that, that was a big project, but it's, yeah. it's holding up, and we have a good, a nice kiosk over there. And a lot of times, there's plenty of parking um, all around to the left, as you go in on the left, but if you take a right and go down by the boat ramp, there's parking for boats with trailers separate from, so it's not congested in front of the boat ramp itself, but if you go up further, there's a whole other parking area at the end of the football field um, that you can walk the trails that way all the way to the South Park part of the, or the West Park mm -hmm. of the playground. Um, the, the time I wasn't there is on weekends, and <laughs> <laughs> that, it does look very different, and if you, if you want me to, I'll go take pictures soon, but f football is, is there, and it, the parking is horrendous. They're everywhere. Uh, at one time, the thought was to have one-way traffic going, and I had mentioned this to Matt before, but you go in, and the entrance, the grading, the, the roads are fine, everything's holding up well, but if you, as you go in, if you take a right and go all the way around, it just gives, but, but we don't have a place to double or triple park. You know, that, that's the, they need more, we need more parking, but. And but, unfortunately, there's really no place oh to put parking know, there any, any yeah. additional parking and the Y is not allowing it and right. and but they're parking on the sidewalk and I mean theoretically they could park at um, Thornton's Ferry School and it's not that far anyway <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't take pictures but the, the, okay. the roads were graded well there are plenty of trash bins and seatings for spectators um, the memorial plaques that are all throughout the park are beautiful, beautiful and, and located in quiet places. So it, you know you can hear and see games or you can walk away in two minutes and be at a quiet spot. Um, let's see. And I, I included in this the other end of Veterans Park, which is called uh, T4 Weston Warner Memorial Playground, and it's it's a gem of a little park, and it's around the other side of Veterans as you're going towards Penichuk Square. It's right on the right, and you just pull off, and there's a little playground for chil for younger children. Uh, the, I noticed there were no trash bins there at all. That might be a problem, but and there was a big mud puddle, but that's what happens. And there was a picnic table. The playground's perfect. It, it looks great. Uh, there was a family using it. But I don't think people realize there's two paths. If you take the high road, I call it, the shore road, you can follow Lake Natticook all the way back up to Veterans Park, the main, the main place. The path goes down what I call the natural aquifer. There's a marsh there, uh, which is important to have on a lake because that's where water comes in from the road and filters nicely through there. So you can see all, there's so much flora and fauna to look at and then if you go left to the high road I call it shore road you you have this visual of, of the beautiful lake and the lake is in good shape you know we're very lucky um, but the best access for that certainly is Wasserman Park at this point because it's, it's not there used to be rope swings and all that kind but we've outgrown that a little or something but there was a picnic table in there too so you could sit and have your lunch and but then another, a couple of women were walking dogs coming from Vets Park, you know, and we, we just said hi. And then I went the low road back, which takes you back out to the playground. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice loop. Mm -hmm. And I don't think uh, this family that was there took their younger ch kids, and I, they didn't know about it until they saw me walking around. So, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, a nice park, and I, I'm glad mm -hmm. it's being used well because uh, signs look good. Like I said, seating's fine, and uh, that's it. Good, Good job. Good. Uh, Wasserman, um, and obviously we, we focus a lot on Wasserman because I'm right there, and so I see it, but that's where most of our stuff takes place. So, uh, But I know you did some walking around, Phil. Yeah, yeah. I was there Saturday. Met you while well, you were putting on the, uh, <laughs> the acoustic exchanges in the hall there, but 
So I, I did spend some time there, and may, maybe some of the stuff has already been talked about in previous meetings, That's but I don't right. know for sure. A lot so. of new members. So in the beach area, and this is probably true for almost all years, the pathways and walkways really could be resurfaced or paved somehow. Uh, obviously, the buildings could use a coat of paint, name a building there that doesn't need that probably. There's a rubbish bin with broken, I sent you pictures of all these mm -hmm. things. So there's a rubbish bin, there's a broken door, and the road to the beach could be paved if you wanted to, but maybe you don't want to pay because that will keep people from going there. But uh, The tennis court area, um, there are there are some steps to go to what I call it the practice court. Mm -hmm. It's all, they're all, they're not there. They're all, they're there, but they're not assembled right. And I you also, I, I heard the pickleball, pickleball players says, oh, the pick, I remember Matt saying pickleball now, but yeah. I couldn't see any signs that says pickleball this way. Mm -hmm. The only reason I knew is I heard the sound of someone playing pickleball. So there I could be some signs sign in there, perhaps. In Maybe there is, and I just didn't see it. Uh, the main hall area, I'll call it. Uh, you know, the, the, there's that beautiful green field area there, and there's the pathway that goes up to the non-resident parking. Big ruts there, so I don't know whether there's a liability issue. I imagine rain goes from the oh, parking lot, shoots right down it's there. Constant. Probably goes across the field and shoots right down the lake because that was all rutted as well. Oh, so, yeah. and I don't know how you fix that, but it could be a you know someone walking down there could. Mm -hmm. sprain her ankle or break a leg, who knows. Yeah. Uh, there's also several broken fence sections in that, there's like six, little, six broken fence sections in that area. In the cabin area, I know in the last minutes that I read, you know, there's, there's a lot of roofs that need to be replaced. Um, and I, you and I talked about this before, like we, the lion's den cabin, which I don't know what number it is, 10 or 11, 12. 12. Uh, you know, we've, we've offered to paint that. The lions would come in and just spend the day there we'd buy the paint if you, if you needed us to do that yep. but maybe we could get some other groups to do the same thing on some of the other buildings I mean it's sweat equity uh, you know we could get four or five members and they could paint that place we painted the inside a couple of years ago uh, but the outside could use it and the other thing that I know in that cabin maybe the other is those little kind of shutter things that come down many of those are rotten yeah. uh, and you have those little hooks on the inside some of those are missing so either replace them with real windows, which is a costly thing, or, or fix all those things. You know, and again, we could help, the Lions would be happy to help doing that. So when- Kenny, you're signed up. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, I, you and I talked about this one in the parking lot one day, so, you know, we, yeah, you know, we have the same fundraising issue the Rotary have, but you know, luckily we've survived, uh, and you know, we, we have did some front fundraisers to, to help us out. So we have a decent treasury right now, so you should yeah. tap on it when you can. <laughs> all right, absolutely. <laughs> So but, but the group is willing to help. Great. Our group is willing to help do that. Thank you. I have a suggestion maybe. Uh, yeah. well, why can't we try a sponsor a cabin program? Have you? With we, this committee? Yeah, well, not necessarily for this committee. <laughs> <laughs> Put it out to to oh, the yeah. community, yeah. you know. Well, we uh, Lions so Club kind of did that. They well, adopted, they did. They, 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 they had cabin, and we renamed the cabin after them. The, the year 2017 right. was the Lions 100th year, the right. Lions International. Right. So every Lions Club was charged to do what I call a centennial project. So we work at Massive. We'd like to adopt a building, and we'll take care of whatever. You know, we, we rake it every spring. We rake it every fall. Yeah, we I see it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, we've painted it. Yeah, we'd be happy to to do that for that cabin. And you know, maybe there's another one next door. You need help we, if you can't get out. But I think that's a great idea. Yeah. You well, know, that's what I'm saying. We have all the other buildings that also need some love. Maybe so there's another group out there that might yep. want to talk to Matt about that. That's been the challenge, is finding the other groups to... Don't we, we know? We, we haven't had that yeah. luck. <laughs> but yes, we have, we have worked on that. So um, can I add to yeah. your, your park, would you mind? Because I'm out there all the time, and the only thing I would add is that we do have a lot of potholes in all your transitions to... Oh, it's not up anymore. To um, the parking areas and around the park. I think you know, but... I don't know if you want to just make a note of it so that, you know, you, as you say, you're there all the time, so it's easy yeah. to overlook. The only other thing I would say is the, um, I believe it was an Eagle Scout project that did the one mile loop. There was the exercise loop. Mm -hmm. that, that's yeah, that was, that's, oh, that's on the conservation land, so yeah, we went exercise. through them. Does it still fall under our, but we can coordinate with uh, an Eagle Scout to create the project? Or well, they, put they it have out there? to go to conservation. They will. Approval. Okay. So, well, yeah. that was my thought. That that definitely needs some well, love. Yeah. And I think I have sent them when people have 
asked for projects. I've said, hey, oh, by the way, we know. Okay. But I apparently nobody's taken it, conservation up on that issue. Yeah, it still needs a lot of love. Okay, so. sorry. Matt, I, if you want to, um, we can connect at some point, but um, my husband has a construction company. Okay. And we would definitely be willing to adopt the company. Okay, and, and great. So, you know, let us know. Right. We'll be you know, another option Wonderful, might be, Julie. has anybody ever approached Fidelity? You know, a lot of those big corporations have a lot of their employees four or five days a year that they're paid off to go work somewhere. We, we, we've had Fidelity. We had uh, Connections. We had, um, we've had a couple group. of different yeah. Yeah. different. Okay, smaller projects you know it ends up usually we get more um like help us get the camp ready for the summer yeah. kind of you know um weeding and mulching and and raking and some of that stuff and so yeah but they, they can turn on 40 50 people in a, yeah for a day you get a lot done yeah tracy one of the things at wasserman and this may not be part of parks and recs it might be part of something else we were out there last time um we looked up if you're down at the lower parking lot that's down by the the lake mm -hmm. um you get the lake on the left hand side so you're looking towards uh, a couple of buildings and, the theater, and so yep. forth there's wires that go across down there mm -hmm. not too far from the wires is a tree that's dead about three quarters of the tree okay. if that goes down so do the wires oh. and it's kind of leaning in that direction Okay. I'll look. We had one go down earlier this summer, but if it's recent that you saw that, then it's probably a different one. This was about maybe a week ago, okay, and so yeah, literally about three quarters of the tree has no bark on it whatsoever. Um, yeah. So I think it's I think it's ready to go. Bye bye. Yeah, and and you know, one of our challenges is my maintenance person is eighteen hours a week, yeah. um, Monday through Thursday. Um, so beyond that, it kind of falls to James and I when we have time and we get some help from DP, like DPW mows the lawns and we'll do some leaf blowing and some of that kind of stuff and they'll fix the water lines when the water lines break. But fixing buildings and painting, if I don't have volunteers and I don't have my 18 hour person, guess whose plate that falls on? You know, so um, one of the things I'm going to be hopefully asking for in the budget and we'll hopefully get approved is to increase that person's hours at least. I mean, there's just so much there that we just can't keep up with. The, 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 the overgrowth of Beaver to Sweet, the, the uh, you know, the dead trees, the, I mean, it's just constant. The roads washing out. I mean, when the, when, those, when the trails wash out, for example, I mean, it's DPW, it's usually two or three guys for half a day just to fix one section of trail. I mean, it's just... With the rain we've had this summer, it's been almost once a week that they're having to do that. You know, and it's like they've got other things they got to be doing. But my favorite, and I wish I had the, uh, I wish I had the pictures. They hadn't come in yet. But um, we had a um, one of our challenges this summer is we had a failed septic line coming out of one of the cabins at the bottom of the hill, and so we had to shut the cabin down for the summer. You know, for the last three weeks of the summer, and and because um, obviously the septic's not functioning and. We, well, we could, waited to get the um, septic company come in to dig it all up and, and deal with it. And so the main part of the line coming out of the building, it was just, I mean, the, the roots around this pipe were, I mean, he's like, first of all, he's like, the pipe is probably 50 years old. And so the roots just went right through it and just destroyed it. But he's like, he, he shows me this picture. And the, where he's like, you follow the line, and the line's kind of heading from the cabin down towards the theater. And directly in its path, there's a pine tree that's probably about this big, right where theoretically the line is. So probably I've got another problem further down. Um, he's, but of course, it's all overgrown in there, so we've got to get through there to rip it all out and we, you know weed whack it and, and whatever and, and dig it all out before we can even get to digging up the line to see if it's functioning or not. You know, so it's it's just. But I've got this great picture. He's like, you can see, he drew the picture, you know, he's drew the spray paint. Here's where the pipe goes, and you can see it growing right into the base of the tree. So, yeah, there's probably a problem there. You know, I mean, but it's like, he's like, I found four different types of pipe uh, in septic lines here in the park, you know, recently, because we've had them out there a couple of times this summer dealing with issues. And, and they're all, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old, and you know there's problems there. I mean, they're just leaking in their roots, and I mean, it's just. So, part of it is we need more money in the budget you know for maintenance and part of it is i need more staff to i mean back in i'm told back in 2008 there used to be one and a half full-time guys just for wasserman park um and when the economy tanked in 08 
that was the first two things the town cut. Now that was before my time, so that's what I hear from hearsay, but um, we need to start building that back up because we're just, it's a struggle to keep up. Now we're having stuff that's 50 years old, is failing, and it's we've got some expensive repairs coming down the road, unfortunately, you know, which we'll talk about in a minute. <laughs> um, some of those, Julie. Matt, I have a question. So I know um, like the Boy Scouts will do different projects for us mm -hmm. and everything else, but I haven't looked recently on our Facebook page or on our website. Do we have like, you know, looking for volunteers, like for community service? You know, that kind of stuff looks good on college applications and, you know, all sorts of different things, you know, LinkedIn, people going for jobs. Do you know what I mean? That might be something to kind of mention because, yeah. you know, I know, um, you know, a lot of people that are looking for something for, you know, their juniors or their seniors in high school or, you know, they, they just need to do community service or, you know, okay. like I said, look good on some sort of application or you know, whatever. So okay. that might be what I, I don't think there's a link on the site at the moment. I'd have to go back and double check. But okay. I mean, we're fairly well tied in with the, the Boy Scout troops in town, the Girl Scout yeah. troops. And so usually, you know, and, and so um, like the Girl Scouts, they have a bronze, um, silver and gold award. And the gold yeah. award is kind of the equivalent of like an Eagle Scout, um, yeah. Boy Scout Eagle Scout award. And so we get kind of various projects over the years from from yeah. both of those groups. Um, I just feel like there has to be other groups or other. And then you know, it's and then we've had there. some luck with some of the businesses in town that have yeah. done some things. So, but yeah, we can certainly put up a link if there's not one there. Okay. Yes, Tracy. Thank um, you. In addition to what um, we were just you were just talking about, uh, is there any way to communicate with uh, somebody at the high school level, uh, maybe at the school themselves, be able to put up posters? Looking for community service, you know, not the criminal version, but the <laughs> town version, um, you know, something like that out there. Because there, what I've seen is there's a couple of other new sites that have popped up. Next door is one of them, and so there's people that are coming from all neighborhoods, mm -hmm. even in Amherst and some as far as Auburn. But um, they're actually asking for community okay. service projects for kids. They're they're trying to do something over the summers, especially with the craziness we've had the last year and a half. Yeah. So, I mean, there are other places we can advertise it, too, right? Yeah. Um, and we have had some high school students come do community service and stuff. There was a, and I don't know if they're active yet this year. They weren't active. The, there's a uh, Random Acts of Kindness was uh, one of No, them. not that one. There was another one. What the heck was her name? Um, there was another club that always used to send us volunteers for events and things. Yeah. yeah. Um, was it Interact? Interact, Interact, yeah. Yeah. Interact. That's through the Rotary, and they are very connected with you. So. Um, yeah. And so, but I don't. They weren't active last year, and I'm not sure if they've started or not this year or not. But, but yeah. Oh. So, but yeah, we can certainly look into that more too. And, and I have reached out to the new principal at the high school because mm -hmm. he used to be at Reeds. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I'm hoping to hear from him uh, for some referrals of okay. clubs and groups that. Okay. Great. Sorry, Laura. Just because you reached out, did you also mention a student rep? Yeah, and that's why I called him. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's why I, I emailed about that. But but I I will add on to that because we we can use the help all around. And, and actually, Rick, you found somebody potentially. Oh. Yes, I found a student. Um, gosh, if I recall, she's a sophomore or junior who's interested, Rick. and I think she's um, wow. begun the process. Okay. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. Rick. I'm drawing a blank on the name at the moment, but and I don't have my work email on me tied into my phone. I, I, summer's over. I've turned my work email off my phone. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> so thank you, Rick. That's awesome. I think that's a great idea to reach out to all these communities. But do you think we could maybe on on the Parks and Rec site, and I know what we can use it on the dog park site, is a list of projects that we're working to hopefully continue and get done. So if we're looking to say, oh, somebody needs to clean up this trail from broken mm -hmm. debris. You can have a group sign up, yeah. Or some group might see it and just say, "Well, we can handle that." And they'll yeah. go out and take care I, of it. I have an offline version of it when when I get those calls, um, but I can certainly put that online. And then, like, and carrying that onto like I know the dog park is always going to need maintenance, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we will constantly need is weeding mm -hmm. until that is under control. So, like, say maybe we can post that. Mm -hmm. We need people to come and help weed. We can have hopefully find some poop angels yeah you know so it's just just something to let people know they're coming to our site to see what we're doing in the town on xyz park and if they can see what we need mm -hmm. or help 
and maybe they don't necessarily need to reach out to Matt or James to say, hey, um, that they're in the park, they're experiencing the park, they might take it, the option on their own and, and do a little bit of help, maybe. right? Well, maybe. let's put it out there. Okay. Um, right. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> let's, let's move on. Uh, Watson Park, David. Yes, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I did take a look around Watson Park, and um, honestly, for the most part, it's in really good shape. Nothing was in horrible disrepair. I didn't see any graffiti, um, none that I noticed anyway. And um, it was really just some minor landscaping, cosmetic type improvements that I noticed, and yep. uh, which might be surprising since I sent you like 700 pictures, and <laughs> actually had more that I didn't send, so I apologize for that. That's good. But um, I don't know what I was doing. So the biggest thing, um, maybe money or time-wise, would just be like you know the parking lot at some point. There's a few areas that are a little rough. Nothing that's um, too detrimental to you know vehicle usage as long as people are driving the way they should and stuff. That's really no issue. But um, just you know a couple areas I noticed with that. Uh, the <clears throat> Certainly in better shape than a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a great thing to just always spend money on. So yeah. you know. Um, yep. So if you find a bag of money and you don't yeah. know what to do with it, there you go. Um, other than that, the main kind of, I guess, kiosk right by where you would, when you park and you kind of enter the grassy yep. area, um, could maybe use like some freshening up, maybe some paint, just kind of mm -hmm. a little bit of a touch up. And then the roof to it, a lot of the nails are kind of popping out and could just, you know, maybe use a little uh, mm -hmm. tap in or some new uh, nails just to keep that all in good shape and good condition. The two... Um, picnic baskets that aren't in that covered area right now those yep. are in kind of rough shape so yeah. it could be you know something to repair or just maybe get rid of if they're not used as much um, I don't know if all the picnic tables that are underneath that like where like the bands would play and that kind of stuff if those ever get spread out or if they stay in that area people keep moving them yeah um, so they they were in a more clearly defined pattern not okay. blocking like the ramp that technically goes in that's there. that's the one thing i noticed and, the but handicap every time somebody blocked, has a party so. in there they pick them up and drag them and move them and you know. okay but if they pretty much stand there those were in great shape i didn't notice any like yeah you know big splintery okay. things or like cracks through those and stuff so those are good um the two grills i mean they're a little weathered from being in the in the elements but they look like they're still in you know decent working condition and you know maybe a few years from now could maybe be yep. touched up or you know some more added if they get a lot of use um just there was some areas with like decorative stones and like hopscotch type stones yep. that just a little overgrown with the grass and stuff so that could use some you know pulling back on that um some grass coming up through some of the other like little stone beds and stuff um the old dunstable sign kind of by the main road is uh kind of blocked off by like a little cherry tree or something that's right there yep um but again nothing major just some small things Okay. Um, the kind of the fence all around the parking lot area is just like natural wood. So it could be a project to, you know, maybe even paint that or something for you know, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, something like that. Um, it probably, yeah, I mean, it looks fine. It looks great. But if, I don't know, if somebody wanted to be creative with it. Uh, the Sauhegan River kiosk uh, looks great. Um, that one's the one that's kind of offset a little bit through the field. Um, I was just thinking maybe if there was like some kind of a little rock or stone bed underneath it or just something to complement it, you know, again, mm -hmm. just a little project, nothing that, you know, was needed, but, you know, might spruce it up. Um, and aside from that, I think the Merrimack Garden Club is doing a great job with like the flower beds and the other areas they maintain. Um, I did notice some of those and um, thought they looked great, thought everything was really nice, very well put together and, and uh, looked great, very complementative to it, so... Um, other than that, I didn't get down there. I apologize, like, after nightfall to see how the lighting and stuff was. Um, but I know it's not really a after-hours type right. hangout. Right, technically anyway, it closes so. at dusk, so which doesn't stop people, but yeah. technically yeah. it's closed. And then the, um, the volleyball areas, uh, just kind of the sand. There was, like, some, you know, a lot of, like, grass or weeds kind of coming up through the sand. So I don't know how much use they get. Um, and I know it's kind of the end of the season anyway, but... Um, if they are popular and get used, that just might be something to mm -hmm. kind of look at next season or, okay. you know, whatnot. But, yeah, other than that, really nice. Um, I thought it might, you know, maybe at some point down the road it would be nice if there was almost a, 
like a path or like a paved you know path kind of around it for you know, strollers and mm -hmm. you know just a little more accessible because it is you know kind of wavy and stuff like that for the ground but um you know. yeah i've thought about that too like a, a walking a measured walking path you know i don't know yeah. what the distance around it is but it's a good size site so that would be um certainly a nice option yeah but no other than that like i said no graffiti and nothing that was too um you know dangerous or anything like yeah. that so okay good, good. All right, and lastly, thank West you, Dave. Um, yeah. Weston Park, Laura. Yeah, um, <coughs> that's a it's it's a well maintained park. It's it's in a funny position. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. down by Turkey Hill Road next to the bridge and the Sauhegan River. And if you stop to read the kiosks, they're actually very interesting. The history of the bridge and the park itself is is quite a story. And I think I know a few. <clears throat> residents that might know more to the story but <laughs> I'm not sure that people do launch too much down out there but there are several places you can so I basically uh, the parking lot looks great there were a couple of trucks in there people just eating lunch I've also been there in the winter and there's plenty of sledding going on uh, but there's a picnic couple of picnic tables at the entrance and there's this beautiful nature path that you can walk down um, there's a lot of roots showing, but it's it's manageable and it's really pretty to the right. It's very quiet, but it takes you to a dead end where there's a little brook thing with a log, and you just turn around and mm -hmm. it, it's a nice little sight. But then I realized um, up on the upper hill, if you go take the right on Natticook up to the Merrimack's first meeting house and the burial ground on Natticook, there's parking up there. Right. And if you walk through there, it takes you out to the sledding hill. Right. And I didn't really know that. <laughs> so, so that's kind of nice. So if people wanted to sled, they could walk in from that end, too. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's Meeting House, not Natticook there. That's me. Oh, yeah, you're right. Meeting House Road. Duh. Yeah, thank you. That's why it's called Meeting House. <laughs> but it's a nice walk, and the gallows, and I, I know plenty. I know that uh, the Historical Society has been doing a lot of work at the Cleaning up the graves yeah, and all that. Cleaning yep. up the graves, mm -hmm. and it's it's a very nice, interesting little area. Okay. To research. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. good. Well. Thank you. That was that was helpful and some good things and yep. um, certainly the the general maintenance things will get sent to Public Works to add to their. But I, but task that, in, in general, I think we've all noticed that they you know the roads are maintained very nicely. Mm -hmm. you, you, they're doing a fantastic job as you are. So mm -hmm. we're getting there. Slowly but surely, but good. I mean, like I said, it's, it's been never a couple of years since done we've that. done this process, so it's just nice to have a different set of eyes on it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's move on to capital, and hopefully we'll move through this relatively quickly because we've been talking for a while. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this is the capital list has changed certainly from a month ago it's changed as recently as this this afternoon um, oh, as new data becomes available um, and so originally for this coming this year is which is front. fiscal year 22 23 mm -hmm. we originally were looking our, our main project this year was supposed to be re replacing three roofs on cat on three of the cabins um, and and it was about fifteen thousand dollars and but at the time if you look here on the map um the building labeled one one and two um and five and six and nine ten we were going to originally we're going to tear those buildings down and right before covid hit um we, well let me back up one, cabin one and two and cabin five and six we were we had structural issues with the the framing and the roof and building inspector basically said you can't use these until you redo the entire roof um and so we shut those buildings down for um, for summer of 19, I guess it was, um, with this idea that we were we had put money into the capital budget at the time. We were going to take down those two cabins and then also nine and ten, which is just kind of beat up. It's kind of our worst. The cabin that's in kind of the worst shape. Um, five and six is the only cabin that still has beds in them from the old sleeping camp. <laughs> and the challenge is, and we had this problem originally with nine and ten, but five and six, they nailed the beds to the floor, the wooden boxes basically, and they're nailed to the floors and they actually redid the floors at some point prior to the town's ownership. And so when you, what we found when we pulled all the beds out of nine ten, and this was six or seven years ago now, 
is suddenly I had a quarter inch gap where all these beds used to sit in the, in the cabins. And so five, six, we had the same problem. The beds are there. We know if I pull the beds out, I'm going to have a gap to patch. And it was just in rough shape. And we were trying to get a scout to tackle, to take on the project and didn't get any takers. And then the building inspector came in in 19 and said, oh, sorry, you can't use this building until you fix this, this roof structure. And so we put money in the budget that, that winter to do last summer. Well, wouldn't you know it, last spring, or spring of 20, a tree landed on cabin 5-6, crushing the roof. Um, and, and, and it was, um, now, the cabins are insured. We have a $1,000 deductible, but we ended up getting something like $17,000 from the insurance company for the cabin, which not only built a brand new roof on 5-6, it also fixed the, the lesser issues. It was like $1,000 to fix the issues in one, too. So we said, OK, we're going to keep the cabins and not tear them down, which turned out to be nice because they were really nice to have with COVID and, and being able to spread out our campers and, and all that. Um, in the process of all that, we kind of forgot that I needed to put those roofs, the you know, re-shingling the roofs um, into the CIP. And so those kind of got forgotten. And so originally, we had three cabins on the list uh, for this year. And then this summer, we had issues with cabin 910, which was the other one that we were originally were going to tear down. And the roof started leaking. And it was leaking for probably a month before I could get a contractor out to actually fix, to patch the roof. We've done a temporary patch that will get me through to next summer. But now I need a roof on. on. And originally, um, we were looking at kind of a couple of, we were going to do three roofs this year. I was going to push two, my, two of these, two of the five out to next year. But then as I was going through um, some of the other numbers today, um, some of the other numbers are higher, and so my, my push is going to be to do all five roofs and just get them all done at once. Realistically, we'll get a cheaper price from the contractors because it'll be one bid, and they'll bang them out in like three days, and, and you know, should be good. Um, my, so my estimate to do all five roofs, which is, so it's cabins one and two, um, three and four, nine, ten, 12, which is the Lions Club cabin, and then the boathouse down over by the waterfront. Um, so those five roofs are up, up, up for this year, and hopefully the council will approve it. Um, but it's $32,000 is the estimate based on kind of it, one roof is about $6,500 now. Two years ago when we hadn't priced them out, it was like $4,500. And so I got to base on kind of new, new market, you know, with roofing costs. Um, so hoping to get all five of those done this year. So that's project number one. Project number two is, let me just move my mouse here. Um, we had had a request last year from MYA. This, this spot here labeled athletic fields is where football practices. Football is the only group that uses it. Realistically, even the camp doesn't use this space. They use the baseball field that's right there. They don't generally, for the most part, don't use football. Um, but it's football, and it's practice, and it's cleats, and they just tear it up there's there, there's no irrigation there currently um, and so usually by about the second week of August it's just a dust cloud um, and I've seen videos and pictures and I'm trying to find it I can't remember who showed it to me um, and so we're trying to chase down who had that somebody had taken a video of football practice from I think two years ago and you watch the kids playing and it's just a cloud of dust I mean in you know, we put, um, we added some spigots outside the function hall and we ran a big long hose so they could wet down the field. We actually had, last year, we had the fire department come out a couple of times and actually soaked the field with the tanker um, to just try to control the dust and that kind of thing. Um, but the request came in last year from MYA to consider putting in irrigation. Now, I had, based on the size of the space, I had, I had talked to some colleagues who had done irrigation projects in other towns and I came up with a number of about sixty two thousand dollars now I did now that was pre COVID number because um, the last project Keen one did Keen did one in 2019 so um, and that's my kind of my, my closest benchmark so I did meet with the town's irrigation company um, Scott Courier about a week and a half ago I'm waiting for the estimate so I'll have a, a more accurate number now 
um, but it really just is not a healthy, healthy place to be playing um, in that environment. And the problem is we just don't have any other, because we have such a field of shortage of fields, we just don't have any other place to put them. Um, and so I'm hoping it's less than 60 grand, but I, I won't know until, when I met with the irrigation guy, um, he said even the warehouses, because they're having trouble keeping stuff in stock, like they'll give you a price, but they'll only hold it for like 10 days. Um, so that number could be higher, could be lower, we'll see. Um, so those are kind of the two projects for this year. You know, um, we're in the ballpark of somewhere $9,500, $100,000 for those two to, to take care of those things. Um, for and so funding if we get proof for funding obviously we go through the process which starts with the council um usually we make that presentation in january um it then goes if they go through the approval process and then it goes to the ballot in april money becomes available to us july 1st now camps in session obviously in july so roofs wouldn't be able to be done until realistically september um irrigation would be the same problem um i can't run i can't have them contractors digging up the lawns with 150 kids running around so that would have to wait till the end of august as well so you'd be looking at either fall of next year or re probably realistically spring of the following year to get it done before summer um, so that football doesn't lose that home next fall you know um, so we'll see um, the following year um, so one of the problems we've had and we've kind of alluded to a couple of times tonight, let me just adjust the mouse here, um, is every one of these, you know, 100 year rainstorms that we keep getting on a weekly basis um, <laughs> is destroying my road. Um, it's, it's a park road. It was never really designed for the amount of traffic it gets anyway. Um, adding the waterfront parking lot, which was certainly a great thing, but obviously the amount of cars going up and down it, you know, we went to a, a couple of years ago at camp, we went through a drive-through drop-off system at camp where they're dropping off at the function hall. But just again, all those cars combined with all the rain and every time we have one of these big rainstorms, the entire road washes out. And, and again, it's one of those areas that DBW has been out there weekly um, trying to fix it, patch it. We've gotten, if you look right in front of my office, um right here um my parking spots you know they've gone to these kind of like four inch rocks just trying to get it to wash out and then the storm we had last week the the rain goes around the rocks and down the hill and so and actually i'll pass out where's that picture so then one of the challenges we have when that happens and actually i'll pass out a couple of pictures here i don't have them on do I, I don't have them on the on the slide, but I'll show you a couple of pictures here that I'll pass out. So the first one is the kind of, this is the parking lot in front of my, my office. And so you can see the, the, the drainage after last week's rainstorm. Um, this is kind of looking down the hill. One of the things, one of the challenges with going down the hill is again, it was never designed for two-way traffic, but cars coming up and down, it is two-way right there. It's, it's 11 feet wide by, Standard, it's technically supposed to be 20 feet for two-way two -way tra two traffic. Uh, and so, of course, they drive onto the shoulder to get past the other car, you know. Um, so all of that is kind of contributing problems. But, you know, we did the, we rebuilt the, we resurfaced the tennis courts this year, um, which was, it's the first time it's been done in 15 years. You're supposed to do it every seven to 10. Um, and one of the challenges we have every time it rains this is all coming straight down the roadway, and I'll pass these out so you can look at this, is I spent, I myself spent two hours Friday afternoon um, trying to sweep sand off the tennis courts because we had a program on Sunday on the tennis courts, you know, and it's like, I don't have time for this, you know. Um, so long and short, I, um, we need to pay, re, need to repave the roadway, we need to widen the roadway, um, it needs, it should be 16 feet on anywhere where it's one way traffic for emergency vehicles and it should be 20 feet um, for, for the, the section. So basically coming in from the park entrance down to where my office is should be 16. Basically, basically starting right where my cursor is here, um, just below the office, um, 
that loop down to the tennis courts should be 20, and then 16 going back up the other side. Um, I sat with DPW uh, this morning to, to price out. They have all the estimates on what it costs to build a road. It's basically half a mile of roadway, $200,000 um, to do that half mile stretch or roughly half a mile. Um, but it's, it's gonna get to the point where people aren't gonna be able to get down there anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna have to shut off, block off the road completely if we don't solve it. Now, because this is, was, you know, this originally wasn't this big of a problem prior to this year. Like we were thinking two or three years down the road and this year just the, with all the rain, it's just kind of destroyed it, you know. Um, I, I have no aspirations that the town's gonna let me put $200,000 onto the, this year's coming year's budget. So at the moment I've got it in for 23, 20, 24. So I've got a year and a half to, to well, I've got two summers basically before we'd be able to get to it. Um, maybe I'll luck out, but I, I really have no aspirations. So that's my big project. The second piece that we actually wanna do um, it, it, and to kind of tie into that is, you know, the la one of the things we've had in the last year and a half is one, we have people that think they can park anywhere. Um, and so we've had days where we come in and like there'll be cars parked on the softball field here There'll be, there was a day a couple of weeks ago, there was a car literally parked in the middle of the basketball court. Car's doors open, they're playing the radio, you know, they're shooting hoops. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, it just, you know, that kind of thing, you know, or they pull onto the lawn here. They want to watch football or they want to watch their kids on the playground. They don't want to walk from the parking lot here or up here. And then of course, we've got function hall rentals. I mean, be, before the pandemic, we were doing eight or $9,000 a year in rentals and if you're going to like a formal event in heels and walking across <laughs> uneven lawn, gravel, you know, somebody's going to hurt themselves. Um, and so, and then lastly, you know, the, the, um, one of the challenges we have in the winter is, you know, DPW will pave the, or will plow the road after the snow, um, but it's usually not perfect for two or three days after. And so we constantly get cars that'll get stuck right here. And so one of my other brainstorms has been, had been parking right here. Put you close to the basketball court, put you close to the playground, put you close to the, closer to the fields, close to the function hall, close to the tennis courts, because people just are lazy and don't want to walk. Um, I don't know what that is, but on. go away. There we go. Um, so it would make, you know, you'd enter basically from here, it'd be angled parking in here. We, Public Works figured um, we could fit 36 spaces in there. Um, and then you'd exit out on this side. So kind of keeping that loop out, we could then obviously close the loop down here and close the loop here so we don't have people down parking where they're not supposed to park. Um, and it just makes it easier so you don't have cars getting stuck in the winter and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, this, is, this piece of it is about $30,000, um, which isn't bad. Um, and that's formal parking lot, not reclaimed parking lot like we have at the bottom of the hill. Um, so we're looking at kind of one big project, you know, kind of selling all of those features into one, you know, fixing the road and parking and in, improved access and all that. Um, so $230,000 for 23, 24. Um, so the other project that we have, um, for 23-24 is, what was that, is, where's the, and this has been in a placeholder for a couple of years. This is Greenfields Farms, um, which was given to the town a couple of years ago, um, and we've been talking for a while, um, about the potential for fields here. Um, it's on, are really only our viable option. In 20, um, 23, 24, there is a placeholder for $750,000 for athletic fields development. Um, and this is where we're pushing for. So, um, I don't have, this particular drawing does not have the fields outlaid on them. Um, I gave my original copy to somebody. I think the MOA has it, but I'm not sure, but um, I don't have the digital copy with the map, but that's fine. So, um, but basically the deep, uh, the town engineer had laid out um, two kind of multi-purpose fields, one which would be here, one which would be here, 
and basically parking here and then that you know parking you know up in here um this this um section here in the middle this is water or a river or a drainage or something it's wet um so which is why fields are kind of above and below it you'd have some sort of bridge crossing over but you'd park here and walk down um my my last guess uh, the last time i looked at developing a fields it was probably 650 for a grass field um we've got 750 earmarked in there um this would just be fields itself no lights um lights for and these would be multi-purpose fields not so uh, so soccer lacrosse field hockey as opposed to baseball or softball um if we were going to do lights um it's probably another three or four hundred thousand dollars um and and we actually have another lighting project further down in the schedule which i'll get to in a second um but there's an earmark for 750 so i don't want to turn around and change it to a million now i'd rather get the fields in first and we've got the fields because we need the fields and then we can go back and put in the lights later um so those are the kind of two big projects for 2324. In 2025, hold on one second, I got a typo on my sheet here. Um, what's that? 2025 26, I have any issues here today. Um, 2025 26, we're back looking at the function hall. This has been on my list since the beginning. You know, when I first got here, you know, they said, come up with a, you know, a five-year plan, figure out, you know, everything. And we've done a lot of it. And so now, but one of the projects that's been on the bot was, has been on the bottom of the list for a while, and we keep pushing it out, and I'm going to try and finally schedule it in, is the basement of the function hall. We have 3,000 square feet of unfinished space, which is heated and sprinklered. Um, originally, the building was uh, bedrooms back in the day. Um, I'm told... Um, that when the found town first took over the property, residents could actually rent a bedroom down in the basement of the function hall and sleep there overnight. And they charged like 30 bucks a night or something for it. Now, the, the rooms do not meet code for bedrooms anymore, but every room had, it was, they had, a, had a, it was a bedroom with a bathroom. So it had a sink and a toilet and a, and a shower down there, you know. Um, so I had the plumbing and all that. So, but what I'd like to do is you could make like, five or six like 30 by 12 foot you know rooms that would could be used you know one of the things you know right now like when we rent upstairs only one person can be in the building at a time there's no way to segment off portion portions of the of the building so now you could have somebody that wants a girl scout meeting that doesn't need the big function hall because they've got six kids they could go to a classroom downstairs or you know those kinds of things um it also gives more space for the camp, which then takes these cabins that are frankly expensive to maintain and can only be used for two and a half months a year and makes them a little less important when trees fall on them. And I don't feel obligated to spend, you know, $6,000 on a roof when it costs me five grand to tear the building down. You know, it's like, you know, again, the buildings came in really useful this year with COVID, um, but uh, they're expensive seasonal buildings. So, um, it's always been my wish. So again, it's all framed out downstairs, um, you know, and it's, so it would be, it's a concrete floor at the moment. So you need an official floor. You'd need drop ceiling tiles and then sheetrock walls. And, and then the, the, probably the biggest expense, I think, I mean, aside from the cost of the sheetrock is, um, we'd probably, we would have to either ramp the building, which means that it would it'd be a long ramp because I'd have to start here at the front of the building and kind of run all the way down to the side door to make it accessible or you'd need a there's a there's a stairway from the front and you might be able to do like a lift not a full elevator but you might be able to do a lift kind of like what's in the o'leary center i'm not sure if it'll go that high or not um, and whether that's more expensive or cheaper than what a what a hundred foot ramp would go cost you know i'm not sure but um I'm, I'm penciling in $100,000 for that particular project. Um, you know, we've, we've kind of talked unofficially about, again, maybe trying to recruit some groups, you know, having 
a group of, you know, a Boy Scout troop coming in a weekend and just do one room at a time, you know, and this may be a way we kind of work on this individually and just to get the rooms framed out and, and sheetrocked, even if it's not the walls and the ceiling, if I can even start like sheetrocking the walls and doing doors. And you know, so we, we've, we've been talking about some of that stuff, um, um, which we'll hopefully get back to this year. So we might be able to cut that cost down. Um, if we can do some of that, you know, then it's the ramp and, and the, the, the drop ceiling and that kind of stuff. So we'll see. Um, no, it's, it's generally pretty dry because we do have, um, we used to, the, so the original, what happened to the original bedrooms was there was a water line break one winter. The building used to be on seasonal water, um, and they kept it on because there was a heating system in there, but the heating system died one weekend in the winter and nobody noticed for a while because they used to ship the office staff back to town hall for from April to, or from October to April. So nobody noticed for a couple of months and it got, you know, pipes froze and burst and nobody, yeah. So, so it's all framed out and it's been cleaned from the mold that it had formed, but, um, so it, it, it's been one of my wish list projects for a while. Um, the, the, so the following year, one of the things we've, we've talked about a couple of times is, you know, over the years is we've talked about obviously O'Gara Drive and the skateboard park. Um, the town is hesitant to, to spend money on the, you know, putting in new elements because it's owned by the school district. We're kind of on a year to year agreement which I'm not even sure has officially been re-signed in two years since the last time it was discussed. Um, but technically, at some point in time, the school district can go and say, sorry, by next year, it's gone. Um, it, you know, and you need to move it. Um, the equipment that's there is 20 years old. It's got a wooden substructure to it. And if we try to take it apart, it's gonna fall apart. Um, it, it, it's not gonna survive, you know. And that's fine because the modern equipment that that um, that you can get is a whole lot better, um, built of better materials and 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 uh, will last a whole lot longer than the stuff we have. Um, to to replace what's there um, is about eighty five thousand dollars with modern equipment. And we had we've preliminarily had talked on this committee last time we I think it was three years ago. Um, there wasn't an appetite. We didn't think it would fit well at, at Twin Bridge. Um, at the time, there wasn't a lot of uh, desire from the council to put it at Watson Park, which would make the most sense because it's centrally located. And so we had kind of tentatively settled on um, adjacent to Bishop Field. Um, there's room, there's a spot when you first, there's two spots. One is when you kind of first pull into Bishop Field, uh, into the parking lot, there's a grassy strip right along the side of the road that the park would fit because um, we've measured it. There's also a spot kind of on the far side of the field, which I know some of the sports do kind of practice on the side before and after games, but it would, could also potentially fit there. Um, but we've, it, we had never put a placeholder in for replacing the equipment. So this, so we have a placement holder in there for 25, 26, um, I have a hundred grand in there, which will also obviously we would we look the other thing we would look at is the basketball courts um, as the other as the other component of that. So, um, but it's been like I said, it's been kind of a don't want to spend money here, then have to tear it down and move it somewhere else. But it's been kind of lingering for a while. So yes. that said, there's been no discussion by the school districts. So I don't want to create like a rumor because yeah, 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 absolutely, a life of its own. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, and there's been no discussion to, to request the, the, that. The main you. thing is to get it in the butt into the CIP so that if if that time ever does come, then we're ready for it. And if the time comes that the school says, you know what, we're not going to do anything with the property, keep it there, then we can say, hey, we got a hundred grand, let's keep it where it is and do. You know, we just have to prepare for it so we have some money ready if you know, whatever scenario happens. If I could just add, yes. if, when anything does happen with that skate park, I know the Flera family who donated yes. a lot of the original. It's the Michael Flera. There's a yes. there's even a placard that they just keep in the loop because I think that mm -hmm. Facebook, when it did take a life of its own, we learned a lesson that the Flera's were getting bad information the wrong way. Right. And that's it's something very near and dear because of it's a family legacy. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and again, tonight was just to 
get it in the budget so it was somewhere in there. And we can always push it out as need be. Um, the other thing we've talked about um, on this committee the last year or so was lights in the dog park. You know, obviously late fall, I mean, realistically, October through April, you know, it's dark at, you know, until 5, 5.30, you know, 6 o'clock, you know, can't really use it after hours. The park technically closes at dusk, um, so technically you can't use the dog park for all those months at night after work. Um, and so putting in, we've got money, a line item here for 2526, fiscal year 2526, um, for potential for lights. I actually have a meeting with Public Works and Eversource on Friday um, to try to get a better cost of it, but at the moment I have $50,000 in there based on my conversation with Public Works. Um, one of the things we have to figure out is where power would get run from and, you know, you know, putting in poles and what does that cost and, and, and all that. But um, we're a couple of years out, but hopefully I'll have a better number on Friday of, you know, how reasonable that seems. But I think that would be another great amenity to add to the park um, from there. And then... Do, 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 uh, also in, in 2526, another big year. <laughs> um, so the going back to our pack map here. So our current beach project is basically dealing with this area kind of highlighted in orange, which doesn't show up real well on screen. But basically, it's the we're going to dredge the lake in in you know where the existing H-shaped dock is, and then we're going to basically rebuild the shoreline. Now, there's a couple of pine trees right here in the center of the beach. The state will not let us take them out. We argued up and down safety, and they said no because it's stabilizing the shoreline, and yeah. So they said no. So we do have money, as, as I had, had announced last time. We, um, the project went out to bid again this summer. Um, CSSI of here in Merrimack uh, was the winning bidder. Um, the project did came in. Still more than what we had, but the town manager said he'd find us the money to get it done. Um, so not only will we get that done, we will also get our dock replacement done this year. Um, and so basically phase one and two of our beach projects is, you know, phase one is the dredging, phase two is rebuilding this half of the beach. Phase three is actually replacing said docks. And one, when we replace the docks, we're basically, we're gonna switch from an H to essentially two L's and we're going to do this for a couple of reasons. One, it improves the water slow, so water flow, so that this, like most of the summer, this front section of the dock is unusable. It's just mud. Um, taking out this metal section, one allows us, we'll, we can still make a um, cross uh, section to, to mark depth, but we can do it with ropes. And, and but it, you get the flow of the water, um, making this more usable, but, but, um, the other reason we're going to actually going to save there's a piece of this center section of dock we're going to save um, and because i'm not changing the configuration of the existing docks i'm going to take a piece of it and we're going to move it over here somewhere and i can do this with my existing permit and i'm going to make a fishing dock to get the fishermen off the existing swimming docks and so we stop having fish hooks in the swimming area what a concept huh so i this that was originally going to be a separate project but because i'm changing from L from H to an L and reusing part of my existing dock I can do it without having to get a new permit so um, so that's so, so that that so docks is phase three um, eventually we have to do a phase four which is the left side of the beach here um, there's a slope here there's the tree roots aren't as bad but we want to improve obviously accessibility and and access to the water and that kind of thing because it does there is still a slope there um, so that is currently in 25, 20, uh, 25, 26 as well. I don't have a price right now. I'm going to say 100 grand for right now, just because that's kind of where we are for this one. We, this is this section of water right here is open sand, and it's not it's not at all mucky like this side is. So I shouldn't have to dredge here. I'm going to leave it as 100, which is what we budgeted for this side, just to be safe. And then as we get closer, we can fine tune, but. Um, so that'll be that'll eventually be phase four. Now, with our current permit from the state, we have five years to do the work on on our existing permit. I can get an extension, 
um, but I have it in there as five years out from now so that, you know, if I need to push it out and get an extension, I will, but if I can get it within the five-year permit, then even better. It just depends on what else is going on in town and whether they'll give me the money to do it. Because <laughs> obviously, as, as we've discussed, we have a lot of big projects here. So lastly, 2627, our fifth year out, um, we talked about lights earlier for, for Greenfields Farms, you know, We'd be looking at 40-foot uh, lights instead of 60. 60 is what you need at, on a, a baseball softball field for lights um, for, for proper visibility. Because otherwise, um, on a 40-foot field, and if you go to Martell Field, this is the problem we have here, is if you're, particularly if you're in the outfield or even in, if you're in the infield and you've got a straight pop-up, um, you're going to lose them as soon as it goes up. And if you're in, even in the outfield, even if you're watching it off the bat, as soon as it crosses over past that light, it's gone. You don't. You can't see it, um, and it becomes a safety issue. Um, and so, you know, so Greenfield Farms, you know, we'd be looking at lights for um, the uh, forty-foot towers. You know, on those two fields. Um, like I said, I'm thinking it's three or four hundred thousand um, dollars. But Martell Field, which again has improper lights that keep failing on us anyway. Probably, we actually got through this year so far. Um, we got about a month and a half left of field use over there, but um, every year for the last three years, we've had sections of lights that just die, and it's that the light towers are there are just too tall for DPW to be able to get up there with their bucket with their cherry picker. So then you actually have to not only coordinate the electrician, but you actually have to coordinate renting a special truck to come in to get up there for the electricians to actually fix whatever the issue is and and it's not cheap it's a couple thousand dollars usually takes us it's like a month to schedule it out and you know it doesn't make the leagues very happy because now there's even less light there um so those lights are failing they're at the end of their lifespan the the those are on like i said telephone poles essentially which aren't tall enough and so again if you're going to fix it you should fix it the right way um, the estimate I have pre-COVID was $260,000 for 60-foot lights. I don't know if the town's going to support that or not, but obviously those fields are booked every single weekend, spring to, to, to fall with, uh, until you know, 10 o'clock at night. Um, so it would be a big loss to the, the adult leagues using them if you lost those lights. Um, my thought in, in putting those at the same time as the lights at Greenfields Farm is you'll get, you're, you're going to bid out lights. I kind of like the roofs, you know, get a package deal hopefully and it'll be able to save some money instead of doing one this year and one next year. And, and, and um, so that's my, my CIP list as it stands. Um, I have to submit the list to the town at the end of next week. So if there's any other thoughts, anything I'm missing critically, um, it's, um, but Unfortunately, we do have some, as we've gotten through, like I said, we've gotten through kind of the initial five years that I was here, and it took us seven years to do it, uh, to get through that initial five-year span, um, and, and now we're on the next five, um, and, and like I said, even beyond that, probably if I had to go out, you know, septic issues are my next probably biggest thing that needs to get factored, is going to probably get factored in here later down the road as we keep dealing with those issues, so... Um, other thoughts on any of that? Shannon. Just one, because we've had very good luck. Um, we have trustees of the trust funds that have trust funds for the Merrimack School District. And I was wondering if the town had an equivalent for some bequeathments that would have come. Um, and do you have access to any funds along those lines? Um, no. Okay. Um, there's a little bit of money set aside in a capital reserve fund for athletic fields. There's a little money set aside for um, playgrounds essentially, which I believe could also potentially be used for skate park type stuff if we needed it to. Um, but I have to go to the council obviously for those kinds of things. But um, but no, nothing specifically for anything else. Not no specific bequests or any of that. No. And then my other question was just because I've been there, um, I'm way over it because my kids are adults now. But um, I know like Gibson Fields, um, and then you know this new Greenfield. It, uh, facility those are if you're gonna have multi uh, sports events there um, always there's younger siblings mm -hmm. high and dry yeah. um, and just is there the thought of having smaller not like to the lot to the level of a Norma French or a mm -hmm. or a, a you know 
neighborhood playgrounds. Yeah, like neighborhood type playgrounds yeah. for those facilities that you know could be yep. planned for. So again, it's something that's more I think more family friendly because yeah. if you're not on the field, you're trying to tie your kid down mm -hmm. so they don't go in the woods. Absolutely, <laughs> good idea. So, I know I've had some poison ivy because of what they found at Gibson. So. Yeah. Okay. Good point. <laughs> good. Any other thoughts on any of that? I know there was a lot there. <laughs> well, you you did a good job, Matt. You were always thinking ahead. That's for sure. Right, that's Thank you. <laughs> very thorough. Great job. Yeah. All right. Um, turn that off. <laughs> um, my last couple will just go into my my other stuff. I already talked about the beach. Um, it's yeah. been you know issued I mean the bid's been awarded so hopefully we'll hear from him that he's starting soon I'm not sure yet I'm waiting on scheduling of that so okay. um, real quickly summer 2021 when we last met it was two days before the end of camp and I was kind of frazzled um, I I understand <laughs> <laughs> I am thrilled um, that to report that we didn't have a single case of COVID not staff not campers Woo -hoo. Yeah, there you go So that was good. The reviews, the, the evaluations that have come back from, from parents have been overwhelmingly positive, so that was all good. Um, but I felt really lucky about the, the COVID. I know, I know of one day camp in particular, they had 12 campers with COVID that ended up exposing 80 campers that they had to send home for two weeks. I mean, that, I mean if that had hit us like that, that would have crushed. I mean, we basically, we covered the money that we needed to cover. It was, it was tight at the end, but we covered the money that we needed to cover on the budget. Um, but if we had lost 80 campers, we would have been in real tough shape. So it was good. So that, was, that part was thrilling. Um, um, cup, real quick, events. Um, final movie night of the summer on Friday night this week. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. We're showing at Wasserman Park at... Um, Seven o'clock. Um, seven, seven thirty. Hold on. I wrote seven. Dusk. Dusk. Yeah. <laughs> hold on. Uh, Quick question on that too, Matt. Hold on. Uh, movies. What do I have it listed at? Seven. Yes. Um, weather's not looking good. So what? What would happen if that movie doesn't get played? Did it change again? The one I looked this afternoon, it was still good for Friday. It was it's just New England. Yeah, that's true. So, um, at this point, if it if we did get rained out, um, we would cancel. I, I don't think I'd schedule another one for the fall. Um, we'd look at moving something to next year, and whether we did the same movie for next year or we just changed something. Else, I'm not sure yet, but okay. I probably would not reschedule it for October because you know we're just we're losing the season. So okay, and we got a couple of other events which I'll talk about in a second um, in October. Um, Next Friday, um, with the Parks and Rec and the Lions Club, are doing a blood drive at Wasserman Park uh, from 1 to 6 p.m. Um, they're giving away, um, it's a, basically like a football-style jersey, a uh, uh, Red Cross shirt thing for everybody that donates, and a haircut to sports clips coupon, I guess. Um, so again, you come donate blood. There's a great need. Um, so that's 1 to 6 at Wasserman next Friday, the 24th. Um, next Saturday, the 25th, um, is the dedication ceremony for the Angel of Hope Memorial, um, which they started installation of the memorial this week. They started on Monday. Um, if you go down into the park, the original plan, um, when you, if you go down the road that's next to the courthouse, the original plan was to be against the woods on the right-hand side. But then when we ran the dig safe, of course, all the utilities for the park run right on that right-hand side, so we had to move it. So when you come down that little roadway next to the courthouse, um, right on the right-hand side in front of the fence is where that memorial is going to sit now because um, it was the only place that else that it could go. But it, basically the memorial is um, to anybody that's lost an infant, basically. Um, so they are building that now, um, or installing that, I should say, now. Um, the official dedication ceremony is next Saturday, the 25th at 10.30. Um, and, then, um, and then obviously it'll be available to, there'll be a, there's a the link already on our website about the memorial. And then once it's officially unveiled, there'll also be information about like how to add, you know, in the future, how to add your child's name 
to it if you're so inclined. It will actually go through this um, um, foundation, Angel of Hope Foundation. They'll handle it and coordinate it with the stonemason guy, and, and so we're not really involved other than we're providing a home for it. So, um, so then um, in October, we have several events going on. Um, First, October 9th um, is our second annual Natacook Challenge 5K Trail Race. Um, we are starting, the race starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, it is, we did this last year. We had 65 runners last year. We'd hope to have more this year. Right now we're at about 25, unfortunately, and, but hopefully they'll all come in the week of, which is what happened last year. Although I did learn that on Millennium Running's got a race in Manchester on that same day, unfortunately. Um, that we didn't see when we went looking for dates. But um, but it's a single loop through. Last year it was two laps through the park basically to get the 5K in. This year we found a new course, so it's one loop that's a little more gradual instead of trying to run straight uphill. Um, so that should make people more happy. Um, but you get this really cool um, wiki running race tech shirt, and then we have the, the medals to hand out. Um, but I am looking for volunteers, if anybody's able to help us, probably 7.30 to like 10.30 um, as, as volunteers. And I'll send out an email as well um, as a reminder. Um, but if you can help, that would be great because we could use eight or 10 people. Um, and then lastly, we talked a little bit about this last time. Um, we, we, as part of this 275th anniversary, we're trying to do an end of year closing ceremony. We decided to combine that event or closing end of year festival with we're combining that event with Halloween and so we've uh, we've called it the oh shoot I'm gonna forget the name now yeah well um, it's a little bit of a 29th annual Halloween party sp sparkly spooktacular so basically we're combining an event um, the traditional Halloween event with some of the elements that you would normally see, like the, what uh, Rotary does for Fourth of July, so we'll have, you know, the games and activities and the food and all that, um, probably some bounce houses and those kinds of things. Um, um, we're going to have a concert, and so the the, the the games and activities are going to run from two to five on Saturday afternoon, October thirtieth. Um, at five o'clock, we're going to have a concert um, in the park at Wasserman from five to six thirty. At six thirty, we're doing fireworks at Wasserman. I met with the fireworks company yesterday, and they fit. Um, we we were we had some discussions with Budweiser about potentially doing it there, and there was some concerns about a family festival event at Budweiser, and I get that, and and so this seemed like and 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 it would also meant kind of a morning event here, and then picking up and moving everything and going over here, and you know, so this is kind of the best of both worlds. So we just tied into one afternoon evening event, so it's kind of like two to seven on the thirtieth, so. Family activities in the afternoon, an, an evening concert, and I have a band lined up, and I'm just waiting to hear on availability, um, and then a fireworks show um, um, at 6.30 at night, and, and uh, we're gonna probably end up doing some sort of shuttle bus from the schools or veterans park or something, I'm not sure. I have to meet with the police to talk to them about it a little bit um, first, um, but should be a cool event. I just sent out the invites to kind of all our business and community groups that typically join us into that event, and then we'll build from there. So uh, that went out this afternoon, so that hopefully in the next week or so we'll be able to fine tune that, but yes. Are we permitted in Wasserman Park to do um, like a bonfire or anything? I know a lot of like towns do that in the fall for, on their events. Possibly. Um, it's, it's one of these, you can get preliminary approval, but then you have to have day of approval, and it's depending on winding conditions, and and so possibly yes. Um, I also have to, you know, I have to. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to restart the map here, but um, I have to section off. Basically, the the, the MIA football field is where the fireworks are going to shot from, and so I have to block off essentially from where the trail comes down from the upper parking lot. It, all the way across to where the trail goes down to the, the what beach will be snow fencing and that'll be kind of the safety zone um, and everybody else will be on the lawn back towards the softball field and the uh, playground to watch those fireworks so um, I'm not sure if I have the room to also then put in a bonfire mm. but fire department will already be there so maybe but I will I will look into that okay thank you and, uh, 
Um, and now I'm done. <laughs> okay um the seniors are getting back to their regular meetings uh last well this monday we had about 65 people uh the only trouble is it's getting discouraging because we can't have our christmas fair we can't have our yard sale because of covid and this um you know and that's how we made our money <laughs> to do things and uh, th so they're kind of discouraged they're kind of a little a bit sad but we're following all the curriculum everyone's wiping their tables and their chairs and everything and we're not sitting 20 feet apart though but <laughs> you know they're doing pretty good some people are wearing their face masks and some aren't depending on who wants to but other than that uh, everyone seems to be doing pretty good the building's absolutely gorgeous anybody wants to visit we're going to do a video I guess yes. They're starting to do videos of everything, and we're going to do a video so people can see the rentals for our place. Excuse me. <laughs> for the seniors. <laughs> but And can I put a plug in for the Humane Society? Sure. Okay. Uh, the 18th, which is Saturday, uh, Mel's Funway. We're having our Wags to Whiskers. That's a, the big fundraiser for the Humane Society in Nashua. And uh, they've changed it from Budweiser. I didn't ask what happened, but it'll be a different situation. And come visit me at the dog tent. I'll be there working. <laughs> okay. If thank I you, Maureen. You're still keeping busy. Um, on to Rick, please. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, registration is currently open for basketball, which is right around the corner. Um, we have approximately 970 children playing sports right now. Wow. Which which I think is just awesome to think it there are about a thousand children yeah. every Saturday or Sunday staying active. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, we're always looking for volunteers now more than ever. Who isn't, right? <laughs> and um, people watching are looking for details. They can get them at MerrimackYouthAssociation.com. Excellent. Thank you, Rick. You're welcome. Thank you. And nice to see you, Shannon. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Um, I would say it's like I never left, but a lot of you are new, so yeah, good to meet you all. Yeah. Uh, so, so with that, uh, school started on the ninth. Um, we started. We always start a little. We always start after Labor Day because of we do all of our teacher workshops before the first day of school. So, you know, when when you see it, it's like that it seems pretty late. But you know, other school districts have random Tuesdays where you have teacher planning days. Uh, maybe your school district does. I'm assuming, uh, but we don't. It's all done it's all through done what front. we call August Academy, which was September this year. Um, but also, um, you know, with the start of school, we um, didn't want the first day of school, especially coming out of COVID, to be during Rosh Hashanah and to exclude our, our uh, mm -hmm. uh, students of the Jewish faith. So we did start on the 9th for that reason and let them come into school with all of their classmates uh, because that is just such a huge holiday for, for their faith. Um, we did not want them to... Uh, feel they're missing out and, and have to kind of catch up. So uh, we did start the ninth. Uh, fall sports started before we did. Uh, so uh, go Hawks. Uh, so football, uh, girls field hockey, soccer, um, I'm also volleyball. volleyball. That was the one I was missing. Uh, there's one indoors too. Which one's the indoors? Uh, so we definitely have, you know, fall sports are in full swing. Um, I know it seems um, like we just got started, but I do expect that budget season will be coming upon us very soon. Um, the good news is, and again, I, so I kind of tipped off, uh, one of our great capital improvement projects that we've had on our CIP was to have the floors redone in the APR, which is uh, at JMU's, which is where, um, where we have our voting um, and you know, where we have our deliberative session. You'll also see that they have activities there. They have the basketball hoops and everything. That's also the cafeteria. It's so many things for so many people. Um, but on top of that, we did ADA compliant bleachers as well as the floor and the Smith gym which I know there's a lot of NYA basketball 
on weekends as well, and that also has new ADA compliant be bleachers. Okay. And that is thanks to the trustees of the trust funds. And uh, we will be having uh, hopefully an open house to that uh, for, for the trustees to walk through in the board. But um, again, can't thank the trustees enough, and especially you know, friends of our district, um, the late Jack Balcom. So uh, we are really sorry he wasn't able to see it come through, but they're beautiful. We did see some pictures. So long school year ahead of us. Um, budget's coming. Um, obviously, it's going to impact a lot of what we talk about here as far as facilities. It's a big part of our budget, um, but we are definitely going to have our hands full this year, to say <laughs> the least. Mm -hmm. um, but the kids are so far you know, doing great, and uh, we look to get them as normal of a school year as we can. So look forward to it. Well, thank you for your stamina there, Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lon. Oh, yeah, I'll give you my very brief report. The council has uh, begun its um, fall schedule. Um, it's regular two meetings a month, uh, the second and third Thursday, beginning at 7. Um, I'm sure they'll be very interested in Matt's um, revision suggestions and, oh, by the way, the amount of your uh, capital improvements. Yeah. I can assure this committee that it's very easy for me to be enthused about what we're doing, about what Parks and Rec is doing because of this committee. It's a great committee. I've been very happy to be uh, the rep. If I may, and I'm not speaking for the council now, council members and public, but I wanted to give a special thanks to Matt and his crew for the um, ceremony last Saturday morning at 9-11. Uh, for those who were there, I'm sure they share my um, view that it was very, very well done, very, very respectful of the people we lost that day and very important. So, Matt, thank you. Thank and you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. All right, um, <clears throat> next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, October 20th, and November 17th. Are there any other comments or discussion or a motion? <laughs> <laughs> Shanna made the motion to, motion to adjourn. Adjourn, <laughs> second. I'll Thank second. you, Rick. Nope. Yeah, he beat you. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.